Hi, today we are learning a new lesson that is reproduction in organisms. This is the first unit of your biology. In the first unit, we will learn four chapters. The first chapter is reproduction in organisms. The second chapter is reproduction in flowering plants. Third one is human reproduction and the fourth one will be reproductive health. So this chapter is just an introduction to the reproduction. It is an introductory chapter which in which we will learn some terminologies along with types of reproduction. So it learning this helps you to understand the further chapters which are there in the first unit. So why we have to learn about reproduction is the question here. So why we have to learn because it is a vital process which kept the generations after generations going on on the earth production. So what is reproduction? Reproduction is a process in which an organism gives birth to its young one which is genetically and morphologically similar to itself. So I have written here an organism gives birth to its young one which is morphologically and genetically similar to itself. So what do you mean by morphologically and genetically? Morphology means the physical appearance of the organism and genetically means genetic makeup or the origin of the organism. It is these both are similar to its parents. The young one will be morphologically and genetically similar to its parents. That's what we are telling here. So when does the reproduction occurs? When it has to occur? So there are so many stages in the life of an organism. What is lifespan? The time between the birth and death of the organism is called lifespan of the organism. So lifespan is the time period of the organisms between birth and death. So this lifespan can be classified or it can be made into different phases. First one is the birth, second one is juvenile phase, third one is reproductive stage or reproductive period, the fourth one is senescence or aging, the last one will be death. So when does the reproduction occurs? Reproduction occurs immediately after the juvenile period that is reproductive phase and before the aging. So in this unit, we are going to focus only on this reproductive phase. So lifespan of the different organisms is different. See, for example, mayfly. Mayfly has, mayfly has only 24 hours of lifespan. Just imagine it covers all the stages in just 24 hours. And what about tortoise? It has lifespan of around 100 years. Just is it it's amazing to know that mayfly covers only all the stages in just 24 hours. But whereas tortoise takes 200 years to complete all these stages. So it is very interesting chapter. Please be with me till the end of the video. I'll be giving like this amazing facts. Organisms have two types of reproduction. One is asexual and another one is sexual reproduction. In asexual mode of reproduction, there will be involvement of only one parent. So one individual or one parent is capable of giving birth is called asexual reproduction. But in the sexual reproduction, there will be involvement of two parents. Two individuals makes the gamete cells, the fusion of gamete cells results in the formation of zygote in case of sexual reproduction. We will talk about sexual reproduction later on but we will focus only on asexual reproduction as of now. So asexual re uh, reproduction is occurs in primitive organisms like protestants and moderns and also the single celled plants and animals. See asexual reproduction is basic kind of reproduction it, it has many other types of reproduction like fission, fragmentation, sporulation, asexual spore formation and also in the higher plants we will see that vegetative propagation is a type of asexual reproduction. So the first one is fission. In fission there are two types of fissions. One is binary fission and another one is multiple fission. So what happens in the binary fission? The, the cell, the mother cell is divides itself to form a daughter cells. These two are daughter cells. Only two daughter cells are formed here. That's why we use the term called bi. Bi means two. So the mother cells divide itself to form two daughter cells which are physically that is morphologically and genetically 
exact copy of the mother cells they are uh, genetically and morphologically very similar the exact copy of their mother cells these kind of uh, these kind of daughter cells are called clones of the mother cells we use the term called clone clones are exact copy of their parents so it can happen only in case of asexual reproduction it cannot happen in case of sexual reproduction because it cannot look exactly as of one parent because inherit it, it inherit, inherits the genetic characters from both the parents that's why it is not possible to look similar to one of the parent it looks similar to both the parents but it cannot be the exact copy of any one of the parent see here in binary fission this daughter cells will look similar to the exact copies of their mother cells that's why they are can be also called as clones of these cell so we have taken this uh, as amoeba as example for bina uh, binary fission in multiple fission what happens the single cell uh, divides into multiple cells after this this cell burst opens to form many daughter cells many daughter cells are formed from a single cell it occurs in plasmodium plasmodium vivax which which causes malaria so this is the example for multiple fission multiple fission is also occurring in leish mania the uh, by examples for binary fission is in amoeba and leish mania multiple fission in plasmodium vivax along with the diagrams you try to remember the examples also in which organism so the next type of asexual reproduction is budding so what happens in organisms there is a development of small bud so you may observe here and here there will be a development of small bud from the parent and it starts to develop after reaching certain stage it gets deattached from its parent it gets deattached from its parent and starts to develop as an individual organism so it it occurs in yeast this is yeast and this is hydra i have taken these particular examples because yeast is a fungi it belongs to kingdom mycota and hydra is an animal so they they both be, um, both uh, are from different kingdoms but still they they follow a similar kind of asexual reproduction that is budding so budding in yeast and budding in hydra are types of asexual reproduction by budding the next type of asexual reproduction is by formation of asexual spores asexual sp spores are usually formed in kingdom mycota or kingdom fungi so they form asexual spores by the the conidial conidial cells divides itself multiple times to form conidiospores this conidiospores are the common type of asexual spores in the fungi see this is the conidial cell it divides itself multiple times to form a, a spore called conidia conidiospores so these conidiospores each of them are capable of growing into a complete hyphae so these after maturation they detach from the conidia conidiophore and they develop into a complete hyphae next type of asexual reproduction is encystation in in encystation this type of reproduction occurs in only the unfavorable conditions when there is un unfavorable conditions what happens the organisms starts to develop some chemicals inside its body and starts to secrete after secretion the chemical deposits around the organisms it forms multiple hard layer or hard covering called as shells so take it as an organism it releases multiple time uh, multiple layers around it and forms a hard covering around itself before re uh, reaching of onset of favorable condition it divides itself into a multiple cells when the condition around itself is very favorable for its growth it breaks open it breaks open and releases these small cells and each of these cells can develop into a complete organisms as a complete individual so next type is vegetative propagation in every organisms there are two types of parts 
one is vegetative part and another one is reproductive part see let us take the example of plants the flower is the reproductive part in the plants the stems leaves roots these are all called vegetative parts of the plant so the reproduction by using the vegetative part of the plant is called vegetative propagation the bulbs roots buds these are called vegetative propagules because they can develop into a new plant these these uh, propagules can be grown into a different whole new plant that's why they are called as vegetative propagules see for example your your uh, uh, stems can be taken from the roses and can be developed into a new plant this is the simple example of vegetative propagation in some of them the leaf bryophyllum in bryophyllum we use leaf as a vegetative propagule so there are so many examples i'll give them later on in the next session we are going to ready, uh, study about the sexual reproduction in detail so till then subscribe to my channel like the video and share with your friends thank you